keep them in prayer. And as I said, pray much for Sister Van Horn and them as they, uh, as they try to figure out what's wrong with Sister Van Horn. Uh, keep, them in, uh, keep them in prayer. Uh, and then, of course, <clears throat> let's not forget uh, to pass out the flyers for our Brother Curtis. Uh, when we're going to have our big day, I want that mountain. We want to do the best we can to, to pass out as many flyers, <clears throat> as many flyers as we can on that, and then also uh, try to invite people. Uh, try to invite people that you know, loved ones, family, you know, to come out and be with us. Uh, we will be having a luncheon right after the services, just to kind of uh, have a chance for people to talk to them or fellowship or whatever they need to to do, and then of course also for us to fellowship one with another. Uh, that'll be March in, in March. Can't remember the date off the top of my head, but that'll be in March. Okay, so let's let's pray much for that. And then what else we got here? Uh, uh, that's about it so far as uh, <clears throat> that's about it so far as I can uh, come up with uh, things to pray about. Uh, but this will be a lot of prayers for our services and, and what God can do for us. All right. I do want to thank those of you that went out door knocking. We had a good crowd yesterday. Uh, I do appreciate that and. Uh, it's funny because, uh, uh, what is it, um, Abigail, Abigail wanted, uh, they ran out of doors and so they started coming back, you know, because they knocked the last doors there and she wanted to still knock doors and she said, oh, I wanted one more, one more. Mm -hmm. And so uh, and she said, I wanted to be like David, I wanted to get one more, you know. Yeah. So I, I'm asking her later on, she's standing there and I said, I heard you wanted to knock one more door. And she had this scar, she took it off and she rose and she goes, yep, like David, I wanted to throw one more stone. <laughs> crazy, little girl, crazy little girl. And having a good time. At least have a good time while you're out there, amen? Amen. All right. Uh, then Paul got a flat. There went our good time. <laughs> I got to fix a flat. All right. Uh, Acts chapter 2. Let's go back to that. We're going to talk a little bit more on this. <clears throat> and uh, on the day of Pentecost, of course, the 50th. The 50th of the week after after uh, uh, after the Lord's Supper had taken place, uh, now that that is the, the the time of harvest, the 50th week, and that, that would be again that would be again the, uh, the the end of harvest is what it was a wheat harvest, and so they're celebrating and thanking the Lord for that, and it's about that time when Pentecost was fully come, and that is to say, the end was about to take place. It's when, uh, which, which is, uh, again, it's called, the word Pentecost simply means 50th, the 50th week. Uh, suddenly there was a, a rushing mighty wind, a sound from heaven, like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house. We saw that in uh, last week. We're going to talk a little bit more on that later. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And we said, God always reveals himself in the fire. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave as the Spirit gave utterance. Now I want us to remember that they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Now keep in mind that there is the uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. When you got saved, you got saved. When when uh, when you got saved, the Holy Spirit baptized you into the body of Christ. So there's only one baptism of the Holy Spirit. When you got saved, you got baptized with the Holy Spirit. But there's a fullness of the Holy Spirit. And that's what they're receiving now. Remember, they had already received the Holy Spirit in John chapter 20. Now they're being filled with the Spirit. So that's not confusing. Some people say, oh, he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. No, he received the fullness of the Holy Spirit. All right, now, he goes on to remind us here. Uh, he goes on to remind us here that that he was, uh, they were filled with the Spirit of God, of course. And then all of a sudden he says, and when this was noise, uh, no, excuse me, uh, where am I at here? Okay, and they began to speak with other tongues. Now we begin to look at that, though I'm going to go a little uh, uh, into something else right now on tongues, but some other chapters that I want to remind you of. Uh, keep in mind that what they say to you is that tongues is a, is a noise you make or, or a, a, a heavenly language. I mean, they go on and on with this nonsense. But it has nothing to do with any of that. If you look at the Bible clearly, they spoke with other people of other languages. That's what tongues was for. And when we read the 14th chapter of, of excuse me, of 1 Corinthians later on, you're going to find out that's all it was. That's all it was. Now, remember also, by the way, 
that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues. Now, the, in every apostle that was there speaking tongues, the answer would be no. <coughs> because the prophecy tells you that only, only 10 men would take hold of every language. Actually, let me see if I, if I mark that one down. Uh, where am I at here? Let me see if I got it somewhere else. Yeah, Zechariah 8 is where I'm going to go to. Zechariah 8. <coughs> Hopefully I find it. <coughs> Fine. I try to mark down some of these with my uh, little deals. Okay, Zechariah chapter 8. And Zechariah chapter 8, I'm going to read you something here that the Bible teaches here. Zechariah chapter 8, look at, listen to verse 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men, how many? Ten. Ten men shall take hold of all the languages of the nations. Even shall take hold of him, uh, of the skirt of him that is a Jew, that's Christ, saying, We will go with you, and, for we have heard that, excuse me, that God is with you. So realize that what he says, In that day, ten men will take hold of all the languages. Now we're going to go back to the book of Acts. So they all were filled, yes. Everybody there that was filled, but they didn't all speak with tongues. Only a certain people. Now, uh, remember, if you go to the apostolic movement, and listen to what I'm saying, because you got to understand this, the apostolic movement says that everybody that gets saved has to speak in tongues or you're not saved. Now listen to that because we're going to give you an answer of the Bible to see if that's true or not. That everybody that spoke in tongues, of course, <coughs> uh, uh, everybody got saved spoke in tongues. I'm sorry, let me get that together. And so we have to consider some of the statements that, that are made. Now remember that uh, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon them and they did what many people can't do today even though we have everything under the sun to work with. We have cars, TVs, uh, cell phones, you can text people, unbelievable stuff and yet we can't turn the world upside down the way they did. Amen? Mm -hmm. You see, it's not the power of equipment that helps us, it is the power of God that helps us. Amen. And I'm afraid that we count more on equipment. For example, let me give you some examples. Uh, when somebody is going to preach for you, we say to ourselves, well, I don't like that person. We say to ourselves, well, I don't think he's powerful enough or, or exciting enough when we should be asking God to do the work. Amen. Because when you least expect it, it's when God saves somebody. And we try to say to God, oh, God, but if you did this, and if that guy was really powerful, no. Listen, I, I like exciting preachers, uh, but we've also had preachers here that, that really, to me, were just too, uh, how would you say it, kind of like, I don't know, rejoice. <laughs> uh, but yet, God used them. Amen. Why? Because we were praying for them. Amen. Pray for the speaker. Always pray for the preacher that's going to be preaching. From your pastor all the way down to our visitor preachers, always, pr always pray for them. Instead we say, I don't like that guy. Not have preachers come preach for us and people said that. I don't like that guy. I don't like this guy. I don't care for this guy. Instead of saying, well, I'm going to pray that God will use him. Whoever he is, that God will use him. Amen? Amen. Now let's go to the next thought here. So uh, I gave you, uh, now, I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to start there before we go into the full-blown 1 Corinthians chapter 14. But I want to use chapter 12 to show you something. Now, I said in that day shall eight men, that's what the Bible says, yeah. ten men, I'm sorry, will take hold of all the languages. Amen? Yeah. Somebody help me. <laughs> now in chapter 12, in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to see some answers here. Look at verse 28. He says, uh, God had said some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, uh, then gifts of healing, governments, uh, uh, excuse me, helps, governments, uh, diversities of tongues or different kinds of tongues. Now, I want you to notice the word helps. Do you know nobody claims that gift? <laughs> Amen. They claim every other gift, but not help. All right. Now, I want you to, to, to notice what he's doing. Then he says this. 
are all apostles? What's the answer there? No. no. Everybody's not an apostle. He says, are, are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. And then he goes on to, to ask another. He says, have all the gifts of healing? Of course, the answer is no. Do all speak with tongues? No. So when the apostolic tells you that if you're saved, you should speak in tongues. If you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. He just asked him, do all speak with tongues? The answer is no. Everybody didn't speak in tongues. Amen? Do all interpret? No. Otherwise, we wouldn't need an interpreter, would we? Mm -hmm. Which we're going to talk about later and which we're going to talk about as we go. Now, here's another one they get you with. All right? Now, watch carefully. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not shared, oh, by the way, chapter 13, verse 1, I'm sorry. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I have become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Now watch what he says, though I speak with tongues of what? Men and of angels. As they say, see, when you speak in an unknown tongue, you're speaking uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the language of angels. Let me ask you a question. If you read your Bible, every time an angel came to speak, how did he talk? He's, he's, he talked the same way they did in Acts chapter 1. Excuse me, in Acts chapter 2. If it's a Hebrew he's talking to, he speaks in Hebrew. If it's a, a, a Gentile, he spoke in Gent. Whatever he, he's speaking to, that's how he talked. He had that kind of tongue. Mm -hmm. Secondly, this is not referring to that. This is referring to eloquency of speech. And you ought to circle that and put on there eloquency of speech. Now, have you ever heard a little girl singing and somebody will go, Oh, she sounded like an angel, even though she did. <clears throat> anyway, we all go, oh, she just sounded like an angel. Now, is that really, or are you just saying that because that little girl was singing? And you Now, we have people that can sing real pretty, and some people might say, boy, they sing like an angel. Well, I've never heard an angel sing. It's just a statement. You see what I'm saying? They're just making a statement. So he's saying, even if I had the voice of an angel, uh, if I could uh, speak uh, with the voice of men and I had a beautiful eloquence of speech like an angel, but I didn't love, he said, I become a, a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. So you realize there that there was no such thing, now watch carefully, so you realize there that he's not talking about a real angel because I've never heard them sing, amen? He's just talking about uh, eloquence of speech. If I get up here, man, and I could preach to you with such eloquence, but I didn't love you. It doesn't mean anything. There's got to be love. That's the chapter of love. Most of you know that already. That's the chapter of love, all right? Because love is what covers all things. Now, he says this. <clears throat> now, notice that he said, if I can speak with the tongues of men and of angels, I'll become a tinkling symbol if I don't have any love. But then watch how he says the next few verses. And though I have the gift of, of prophecy, he said, to understand all mysteries. Now, watch how he's saying it as if he had them. But then he tells you later he doesn't. You see what he's doing? He's just using uh, terms to, so that you'll understand. Like if I said to you, though I can speak this, or though I can do this, or though I can do that, even though you know I don't, but I'm just giving you an example. Because if I didn't love you, all that's useless. Now watch what he goes on to say. And though I have the gift of all prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, uh, and have not charity, he said, again, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to, to feed the poor, and though I give, though I give my body to be burnt, uh, to be burnt, uh, and to, excuse me, have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity never, charity suffereth long, is kind, charity envieth not, charity vaunteth uh, itself, not, uh, it's, Vaunt is not itself, it is, uh, it is not puffed up. So notice how he does all that. And now I want you to notice something. He says, though I have all faith, though I have all, all I, I understand all prophecies, he goes through all of that. But then he says to us, as you go down to verse 9, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. Now he tells you, I don't know everything. By the way, this is the apostle Paul who walked with Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I don't know everything. I prophesy in part whatever the Lord shows me, and I do whatever whatever I can. He says, uh, but when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part shall be done away with. Now, 
Uh, do we have uh, today uh, perfect prophecy? We have to say yes and only this in the Bible. In the Bible. Amen. I don't have to listen to a guy prophesy. I've got the Bible now. That which is perfect, thy word is perfect. We, what, the word of God is, has already come in, and so now we can just depend on the word of God. Amen? Well, but Paul is, is, lets you know, I don't have, I don't know everything. I don't understand everything, even though he sounded like he did, but he's just giving you two thoughts here. Uh, if I could do this, and if I had this, and if I had that, but I don't. And I don't sound like an angel when I preach. Uh, and so because of that, he said, all I could do, all I could do is know in part and understand in part and wait for God to give us a fuller revelation. And that fuller revelation comes in scripture. Now, for example, sometimes you go to some of these churches and they'll get up and they're going to prophesy about something. And you find out that their prophecy was false. Let me give you a good example. Uh, you can find this one on YouTube. I, I don't know the lady's name, but she was, uh, she was going to preach somewhere. And she stands up to preach, uh, and while she's preaching, one of the guys gets up and he goes up to her, and he says to he says, you know, uh, I'm the pastor of such and such church, and they're li he's, she's listening to him, and she said, you know, uh, he says some of my people are here, and the guy says some of my people are here, and I just wanted to say a few words, and the lady says, oh sure, you know, I'm glad some of your people are here, and she starts prophesying over the guy. She starts saying how great he is, and God's going to use him, and I mean, you name it, she prophesies over the guy. When, when she's done, the guy says, well, I want to just tell my people that are here not to listen to her and her false prophecies. And all of a sudden, he was of the devil. All of a sudden, wait a minute, what happened to the prophecy? <coughs> Amen? What happened to he's of God? What happened to all of that? Now all of a sudden he's he not, now all of a sudden he's no longer what uh, he's no longer of God. I'm saying to you that all this stuff that goes on in some of these churches is nothing more than uh, I don't know what hogwash <coughs> is, but we're going to use it. Amen. Hogwash. Amen. I don't know what it is, but I, hear, I used to hear the old preacher say that. That's hogwash. All right, so uh, <laughs> let's go do that. I assume after they wash the hog, I guess I don't know. All right, now let's look at the let's look if you would at chapter 14. And we're going to start there. I don't know how far we'll get on it. Chapter 14, that's the main one concerning tongues. That's the main one concerning tongues. That's what they use, all right? Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather <clears throat> that you may prophesy. Or the greater one is that you prophesy. That's basically what he's saying. That, not, nothing, really, nothing really big. He said there's nothing wrong with spiritual gifts. Uh, to have the gift of singing, to have the gift of teaching, to have the gift, nothing wrong with spiritual gifts. But the greatest one is that you prophesy. All right, now, uh, look at that word prophesy, and remember that in the Bible you got two, uh, the word prophecy, if you look it up in any commentary, it'll give you two thoughts. One of them is to foretell the future. The other, prophecy, the other word prophecy is to preach, to preach, to expound scripture. So uh, uh, Paul is talking about expounding scripture. But that word can be used either way you want to. All right, so he says, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in unknown tongue, now watch it, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth how it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Now be careful with those because actually the answer is simple. But when I was a young Christian, I'd reach that and I'd go, man, I, what does he mean by that? Amen? You look at that, you go, but well, what does he mean? He's speaking to God. That's what it says. Well, remember that there are sayings that you and I can remember, even in our youth, especially if you come from the uh, Spanish language. Somebody's talking, and they'll, and they'll say it like this. What's he talking about? Only God knows. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's exactly the statement he's using. Only God knows. Somebody would come home all drunk and they're sitting there and they're mumbling and only God knows what he's talking about. That's, that's a statement he's using. I'm going to prove it to you in a minute. That's a statement that he's using. Now watch what he said. He said here that if you speak in unknown tongue, you're speaking not unto men but unto God, right? Because mm -hmm. Why? Because a man doesn't understand what you're saying. Look at the next verse that I'm going to show you, verse 9. So, so likewise, except you utter by the tongue the words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? 
For ye shall speak unto the what? There. You're just talking nonsense. You're talking in the air. Nobody knows what you're saying. <clears throat> Same, uh, you ought to combine those verses, all right? Because they're good verses to deal with. Look at verse 14. Now this one used to really get to me. It says here, But if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Now stop right there. Here's what I used, here's the way they taught me that. And so it used to really kind of bother me because I didn't know how else to answer it. So if my spirit is praying, now watch what it says. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit will pray it, but my understanding is unfruitful. Here's the way they would describe that to me. So you're praying in an unknown tongue, and you have no idea what you're saying because you're, you're praying in this unknown tongue, and, and God understands you, but you don't have no idea what you're saying. But that's not what that verse is saying. That sounds good, but that's not what the verse is saying. Now watch what he says. Let's read it carefully. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding, that means he understands. Listen carefully and watch what he does. But my understanding or the things that I know are unfruitful. To who? Watch what he says. Now let's read the rest of it. What is it then? I'll pray in the spirit. I'll pray with understanding. Notice he controls it. He's not out of control. I'll sing in the spirit, I'll sing with understanding also. Else when thou shalt bless with the spirit, how shall he, he that occupy the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of, of thanks, seeing that he understands now what thou sayest. So my understanding or my knowledge is unfruitful to who? To the person sitting there listening to me. He says, if I pray in the spirit, if I preach in the spirit or pray in the spirit, the person sitting there is not going to know what I'm saying. So I don't care how great I am or how much I know, it's unfruitful to them, not to him. He said, my understanding is unfruitful to them, the one sitting in the room. He said, for thou, for thou giveth thanks, he says, well, but the other is not edified. See, he's talking about other people, not himself. He understood what he was saying in the tongue, but the other people didn't. And then he goes on to say, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than you all, yet in the church. You see how his concern was the church, not self? Yet in the church, I'd rather speak five words with understanding that, uh, that my voice, but that by my voice I will teach others, than 10,000 words uh, in an unknown tongue. <clears throat> so when he makes a statement, when I speak in an unknown tongue, he said, my, uh, my understanding is unfruitful. He's not talking about for him. He said, I'm praying the Spirit, and my understanding is unfruitful to the church or to those that are listening. Now, that's why he, he ends up saying, I thank the Lord that I can speak. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than you all. Yet in the church. You see what he did? He showed you that the understanding that he had was unfruitful, not to him, but to those that are in the church. It'd be like me. Uh, let's assume that, that uh, we're going to start a class here and the only one that showed up was Brother Mike and Sister Sherry. And I preached a tremendous message in Spanish. What good did it do them? <laughs> I mean, I tore it up. I, man, I mean, I'm telling you, I could feel the Spirit of God. But what good did it do them? Amen. That's what he's telling you. <laughs> Amen? Now, for example, we had Brother... Uh, who was it, Brother Oscar, come and preach for the one time in Spanish. You remember that? And I stood up there, and I went through whatever he was saying, and I would translate it. Because it's useless for him to speak to you in Spanish if you don't know the, the language. Mm -hmm. Amen? The only one saying amen was Elizabeth, and she don't even know how to speak Spanish. I don't know why she was saying amen, but every, anyway. Maybe because I wasn't up there. Was that it? <laughs> I'm just kidding all right, so uh, I said, make it clear to you. So you let me, I said, get it clear to you. Okay, now, let's go back, if you would, because he says, uh, <clears throat> you don't speak unto men, but unto God. That is to say, only God understands whatever you're talking about. For no man understandeth him, how in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. To who? To the people that are there. They don't understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It's a mystery to them. Not that he didn't understand. Because those that spoke in a tongue always understood what they were saying. Now, you're going to see it more clear. I wanted to give you those verses so as we go through it, you'll see it more clear. 
that he's referring to the church, always to the church, always to the church, not to the person talking. All right, now, watch what he goes on to say. But he that prophesied, verse 3, but he that prophesied speaketh not unto, uh, excuse me, unto men, and, excuse me, and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. So again, if I speak in unknown tongue, <coughs> I can, I'm edifying me, but what are you getting out of it? Mm -hmm. I'm edifying self. I'm building myself up. The edify means that you build yourself up. I'm getting some learning, but what about you? Now watch what he goes on to say. He says, edifieth himself. He says, but he that prophesies edifieth the church. I would that you speak with tongues, but rather that you prophesy, for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Except, are you ready there? Now watch this. Except he interpret that the church may receive edifying, uh, that the church may receive edifying. Now wait a minute. He said, that's all right for you to come in here and speak in tongues. But you need an interpreter so that they'll get the they'll, they'll understand. Now, if there's an interpreter, that must be a language. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. If I can get an interpreter, then what he's talking about is a language, not an angelic voice or whatever. He's talking about a regular language. He said, if you're gonna if you're gonna get up there and do that, make sure you have an in, uh, make sure that you have an interpreter. He says, now, brethren, he said, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit except I shall speak to you, <coughs> excuse me, unto you, either by revelation or by knowledge or prophecy or by doctrine? All right. So he says, when I'm going to teach you in a tongue, I should be teaching you what some God revealed to me, a doctrine. I'm not just going to make a bunch of noise. There's something behind the tongue. Amen? In other words, when they go to you, oh, I just started speaking in tongues. I have no idea what was going on. You didn't speak the tongues of the Bible because you should know what's going on if you're speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. If I preach in Spanish, I got an idea of what I'm saying. Amen? I got an idea of what's going on. He says, and even these without, and even things without, uh, without, with, without life, giving sound, rather pipe or heart, except they give a distinct uh, distinction in the sounds. How should it be known what is piped? Uh, uh, excuse me, yeah, piped or heart. He says, if a trumpet give an uncertain sound, how shall how shall uh, excuse me? Who shall prepare himself to battle? Now, even a trumpet gives you the right kind of sound. Amen. Something you understand. Something that you say, okay, this is for this or this is for that. Now, when uh, people that have been in the army and stuff like that, they understand there's, there's charge, there's retreat, amen, mm -hmm. uh, there's wake up, but it's all done by a trumpet. Mm -hmm. And that trumpet's time you get up, you know the sound of it. A man that speaks in his own tongue and has no, no revelation, no doctrine or anything is like a barbarian. He's about to say that to us, all right? Now, watch what he says. So likewise, except you utter, verse 9, so likewise, except you utter by the tongue words easy to be understood. Wait a minute, I can speak with a tongue and make the words easy to be understood? That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. He said, easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak under the air. What good did he do for me to come in here and preach a tremendous sermon when only God knows what I'm talking about? Only the air heard me. Amen. The wasted words. That's what he's saying. He said, there, there are, <coughs> excuse me, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices, now that's again, languages, in the world, and none of them is without significance or signification. He says, there, uh, therefore, if I, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Now the Greek word that is used there for barbarian is the Greek word uh, foreigner. That's what the word is. So you can circle that with foreigner and that's exactly what he's saying. You're like a foreigner to me. I have no idea what you're talking about and you have no idea what I'm talking about. Even so, uh, excuse me, 
Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual uh, spiritual gifts, <coughs> seek that you uh, that you, excuse me, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. All right, you want a spiritual gift? Make sure that that gift you have is going to edify the church. Again, what good does it do for you to come in with a different language and preach and go bananas in here and nobody knows what I said? It's useless. All right, so those tongues that they use over there, that you go to that place and they'll start talking in tongues. And then, by the way, you got the women talking in tongues, you got the men talking in tongues, you got people falling on the floor. That's not of the Lord. Now, let's continue. I got to hurry a little bit here. Even so, verse 12, <clears throat> even so, uh, ye, excuse me, even so ye, or as much as, no, I'm sorry, I just read that. Let's go down to verse 13. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. All right, look what he said. Because when you see a Pentecost or one of these guys speaking in unknown tongue, they don't interpret. They just speak in unknown tongue and sit down and say, oh, God just spoke. No, God didn't do anything for you. Amen. It's faith. And the Bible says, he that boasts of a false gift is like a cloud without water. Mm -hmm. A lot of noise, but that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, watch what he goes on to say. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. When you saw that a while ago, it's unfruitful, and you ought to circle unfruitful, and then right there, to the church. Mm -hmm. He's not talking about it's unfruitful to him. It's unfruitful to those, to those that are listening. Mm -hmm. All right? What then? I shall pray with the Spirit. I'll pray with understanding uh, also. I will sing in the Spirit. I'll sing with understanding also. Else, when thou shalt bless in the Spirit, how shall he that occupy the room <clears throat> of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing that he understands not what thou sayest? You see how he's applying it to the church? It's unfruitful to the church, not to you, to those that are listening to you. Then he goes on to say, For thou verily uh, giveth thanks, uh, well, he goes, but uh, but the other is, is not edified. I thank God that I speak with tongues more than you all. And he did. Remember we talked about that in Acts chapter 22, verse 1 through 2. The apostle Paul uh, spoke in the Hebrew tongue. And they were all amazed that he did that. Why? Because he could speak at least eight languages. All right. <coughs> Yet in the church, <coughs> this is hard for Pentecost to listen to. Yet in the church, I'd rather, I'd rather speak five words with my understanding, that which my voice I teach other, I may teach others also, than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. That kills their kid. Amen. When they all get up and start doing that nonsense, and the preacher starts doing it, and starts dancing up there, and uh, making all that noise. Now watch what he's telling you. Brother, he said, be not children in understanding. How be uh, in malice, <coughs> excuse me, be ye children, but in understanding be men. In the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak unto this people. Yet, yet in all, the, <laughs> excuse me, yet for all that will not, will, they will not hear, hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore tongues, now listen carefully, are you ready for this one? Wherefore, Tongues are a sign not to them that believe. That's in the church. All right? Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Tongues are a sign not for them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesy in service to them that believe, that serve not them that believe not, but for them that believe. Now, wait a minute. He, he just said tongues are not for those that believe. What good does it do for me to speak to you in tongues? If I really have that gift, I need to go out in the streets out there, and I'm going to meet a guy who's maybe Japanese or Chinese that I don't know the language at all. Amen? And I'm going to be able to witness to him. That's what tongues was for. Mm -hmm. For those that believe not. To go out there and get them convinced, amen, and share the gospel, which is the way started in Acts chapter 2. Tongues is not uh, something that we just to play around with. It was not for us uh, to those that, that believe, but to those that believe not. I remember one time I was at a, verse 22, remind myself where I'm at. <clears throat> I was at a station, a bus station, 
and a guy started uh, talking to a couple of girls that were sitting there. He went and sat down, and he said, oh, you got to come to our meeting, and he starts talking about how they're falling all over the place, and people are jumping, and people are getting healed, and I mean, he just went on and on. All the healings they were having, and man, he said, we're just having healing. We're seeing the lame walk, like the Bible says, and we're seeing, you know, how they get all into that, and I said, okay. By the way, I've seen Kenneth Copeland, one of the biggest healers, try to heal people, and they didn't get healed. He has no records of them. Why? Because it doesn't happen. Amen. Just so we know that it doesn't happen. So, uh, in this, in this, uh, he, he was talking like that, and all of a sudden, uh, he looked over at me. He goes, "Hey, you, you go to church anywhere?" I said, "Yeah, I go to a free will Baptist." He goes, "Oh, a Baptist." <laughs> you know, they do that. They go. I said, "Yes, sir. I'm a free will Baptist. Been going there for a few years." We got to talking. I happened to have my New Testament with me, so he got to talking to me about tongues. And I, I was using the scriptures like I'm using them right now, and he had no answers. <clears throat> he said, well, well, you know, well, I said, well, listen to me, that. the Bible doesn't teach that. I said, can you really speak tongues? And the guy goes, well, well, sure. I said, I'll tell you what, if you'll come to my house and you'll share the gospel with my mom in Spanish, because she don't speak English, and then you would heal her from her diabetes, I said, you guys are a disciple. <laughs> Well, he said, we, we just don't. I said, no, you don't do that because you can't. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. I mean, they can boast anything they want to, but they can't. Mm -hmm. How many times have you seen 60 Minutes or, or some of these shows where little ladies who were, uh, who were bedridden, like Sister Van Horn is, and they would send thousands to Kenneth Copeland because he was praying for them to get healed from cancer. And they send the money. Do you know where they found the letters? In the trash can. Mm -hmm. You know where the letters went? <clears throat> to the bank. Mm -hmm. To the bank. And they asked the bank manager, well, do you guys ever read those? Do you give them to anybody? No. No, we don't read. We're not responsible for those letters. All we respond to get the check, put it away, and the letters we just throw in the trash. And people literally give to that guy for healing. And by the way, the lady died. The, 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 the deal showed how the lady died. <clears throat> it's ignorance for us to believe such things. Amen. We need to understand that it's ignorance for us to believe such things. Now, we, we left off on verse 22. Let's move down to verse 20, uh, 23. For if the whole church come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, <clears throat> excuse me, and there come, under, there come those that are unlearned and unbelieving. Will they, they not say you're mad? Mm -hmm. You got one guy preaching one thing, one other guy preaching another language, another another language. Nobody understands what's going on. You know what that word mad means? Mm -hmm. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Won't they think you're nuts? And by the way, people with common sense do think they're nuts. Amen. <clears throat> I mean, you got those that get deceived into it, but most people say that people are nuts. <clears throat> but if all prophesy, now watch this, and there coming uh, one that believeth, believeth not, or an unlearned, he is convinced of all and is judged of all. And thus the secrets of his heart are made manifested so that, uh, so that falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that, that God is in you of truth. Now, wait a minute, but if you preach, if you get up there and preach the gospel, here comes a guy of the unlearned. He's going to listen, and he said, hey, man, that's what I need. I need to get saved and profess that God is in you. Amen? Otherwise, they think you're a nut. Consider what he's saying. I mean, he's, the, 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 the doctrine is pretty clear. Then he goes, and I have to move on quickly. I got about three minutes or four minutes. Verse 26, how is it then, brethren, when you come together, everyone has a psalm, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation, that all things be done to the, uh, uh, be done unto edifying. Mm -hmm. How is it that everybody wants to teach on this, preach on that? He says, no, 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 you get down and make sure everything's uh, to the edifying or the building up of the church. He says, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, now watch carefully, because you don't want to miss this verse. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, uh, and of that course, and let one interpret. Uh-oh. 
That just killed the Pentecost tongues. Here's why. He said, if anybody's going to speak in tongues, let it be by two or three. And before you're done, let someone interpret. That's why. So that you get edified. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's saying. But you don't. Amen. He said, let someone interpret so they, that everybody gets it. And how many can speak? Two or three. Does that mean the whole church goes nuts and starts jumping up and down? No. He said, two or three in order. Remember, we serve a God that's a God of order. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now watch what he goes on to say. Let it be only by two or three. And let it all be done perfectly. He goes, but if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Amen. Amen. Now you're really not going to teach or edify God in any way, but you say just speak to yourself and God because there's no interpreter. Mm -hmm. There's no one to tell the church what you're saying. Right. So when they don't interpret, it's unscriptural. Amen. Now I'd like to go to one of those churches someday, and when somebody does that, I'd like to get up and interpret and say, God said you're going to buy me a new car. And it's going to be this type of car. Amen? That's a good prophecy. See if, they'll, see if they'll follow it. Let the prophets speak two or three and let others judge. Now, when I stand up and preach, you're to judge what I said by Scripture. She said, let the preachers preach. And then you judge if what they said is, is proper or right. Nothing wrong with that. If anything be revealed to one that said it, let him force hold his peace. Well, I can't hold my peace when the Holy Spirit comes on me. I go bananas. No, you hold your peace. Amen. All right. He says, for as many, excuse me, for all may prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and that all may be comforted. The preacher is going to preach to you. And if another preacher comes, let him preach, so that everybody can get comfort. All right. Now, boy, I got too many to, to close. I'm going to give you a few more, and then I'll, I'll close. <clears throat> Uh, and the spirit of the prophet are subject to the prophets. Always remember that when somebody says the Holy Spirit came upon them and lost control, no. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. It's not going to make you lose control. Mm -hmm. Then, for God is not the author of confusion. I didn't know what happened. I didn't know, wait a minute, God is not the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. I just fell to the floor and I started shaking. God is not the author of confusion. Right. But of peace and of a what? Uh, I was, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints, as all the churches of God know that or understand that. Now, I'm going to give you this one. I have to get back to this one next week. Let your women keep silent in the churches. Notice it didn't say church. It said churches. You know why? Because they probably had a lot of women speaking in tongues or trying to prophesy in the church. Now, ladies... In the Bible, there's two prophets. As I said, the word prophet means two things, foretell the future and to preach. Mm -hmm. There were women in the Bible that foretold the future. They didn't do it in the church. Amen. But there were women that were prophets. But in the church, he said, you tell the women to keep silence. Mm -hmm. All right? He goes, let your women keep silent in the church, for it's not permitted for them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as, so, as also saith the law. So a woman is not to preach. She's not to prophesy. She's not to teach the men. And we'll go through that next week, all right? We're going to have to stop right here. Yeah, we're going to have to stop right here. Uh, and, then, and then go from there, all right? We're going to have to stop right here. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to you in prayer, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the uh, services. I pray, dear God, that you give us more wisdom and understanding concerning these doctrines. In Christ's name, amen.